Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here. As you guys can see on the screen today, I want to talk a little bit about SoFi Technologies Incorporated. This is ticker symbol SOFI or SoFi uh, for those of you who are maybe not as familiar with this company or with this stock. Uh, and today was a very, very good day for SoFi. It was a good day kind of all around the market and we'll get into that in a second, but SoFi specifically did very well being up 4.25% on the day. Uh, you know, we started out pretty green. We dipped down and then uh, after getting green again, Again, we were just up and up and up all day long, all the way into close, uh, down 0.15% after hours, but that's not really anything. We'll see how the rest of the week goes. Um, I know there was some talk about how the market might turn uh, downwards in the after hours, but that did not happen. Everything held up. Everything was looking good today. Uh, everything's really been looking good in a lot of the market over the past week, like past month. Um, so maybe we found a bottom. Maybe we're on our way up now. Maybe we're home free. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but like I said, the whole market was pretty green today. Dow Jones up over 2%, S&P up almost 3%. NASDAQ up over 3%, Russell up 3.5%. Tons of green everywhere, but SoFi did outperform all those major indices. So definitely a very, very good day for them. And now we can get into some of the news because there's always plenty to talk about with this company and with this stock. Uh, first, one of the bigger stories of the day is that SoFi has scheduled their conference call to discuss the Q2 2022 results. Uh, the digital finance company today announced plans to host a conference call to discuss financial and operating results for the second quarter of 2022 on Tuesday, August 2nd, 2022 at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, obviously, this is after the market on Tuesday, August 2nd. So if I also plan to release the second quarter 2022 results on the investor uh, relations section of its website at investors.sofi.com after market close on Tuesday, August 2nd. So now we have the day. We know officially when this thing's going to be going down. We have um, that date to keep our eye on, to start preparing for, to see uh, you know, whether we think things are going to be good, bad, sideways, whatever the heck direction. Uh, we can start make, coming up with the predictions of the numbers, whether we think SoFi is going to have a good quarter, bad quarter, good uh, projections for the rest of the year, bad projections for Q3, Q4, whatever. Um, but, but we know hopefully something exciting hopefully something big is coming who knows we'll have to wait and see but yes august 2nd the date is now official uh and now it's going to be time for everybody to start you know going through their whole analyses and, and starting to break things down coming up with their opinions thoughts and everything before then um, but we also have the day where you know we can expect a big announcement and, and to go through the numbers so that'll be very very interesting it's cool to finally see that um we also have this coming from investorplace.com that sofi could resell one billion dollars in stock and what that means the resale has stirred speculation about a potential acquisition target sofi has filed forms to the sec detailing a resale of capital of one billion dollars the capital includes common stock preferred stock stock options and warrants sofi stock is down more than 55 percent year to date what they to say here is that uh, SoFi stock is in the spotlight today after a news-packed week. Shares are currently up almost 5%. Shareholders voted last week to give the board discretionary authority to enact a reverse stock split over the next 12 months. SoFi stock shareholders expressed mixed views about this as reverse splits are generally seen as a negative. However, a higher stock price could possibly attract more institutional interest and in analyst coverage. Now, the fintech company has filed forms to the SEC detailing a mixed shelf offering of $1 billion. SoFi will not issue new shares Instead, existing shareholders will resell their shares. So that is a very, very big key here. Um, obviously, people hear, uh, hey, we want to do a billion dollar offering. We're trying to raise money. Maybe we're looking at acquisition targets, whatever. That is exciting. It can be good. It can mean that, yeah, maybe a big acquisition's coming. Maybe they're loading up on money. Maybe they're just preparing for recession, depression, whatever. Maybe they're getting ready to do something big. Who knows? But whenever you're talking about raising money, people are always going to be like, hey, what's the catch? What's the dilution? How much is the dilution? How hard are we getting hit? How much are my shares getting hit? But the fact that they're not issuing any new shares, the fact that they're just getting existing shareholders to sell or resell their shares is a very, very big key. And this could end up being a very, very big positive, but there's no reason, at least that I see right now off the top of my head or from what I've seen so far, why this should necessarily have any negative sides. Now, hey, maybe they spend this money poorly. Maybe they do something stupid with it, whatever. Um, but it seems like they're just kind of setting up to have an extra billion dollars laying around and maybe just maybe do something exciting with it, but, or maybe just, you know, have a, a safety net who knows for sure. Uh, existing shareholders who are open to reselling their shares include uh, Nodo and head of operations, Micah Hevener, among others. These shareholders may resell their shares at their discretion. In addition, uh, the resale includes the exercise of previously outstanding warrants and stock options, settlement of restricted stock units and a preferred stock. Um, and then they kind of go into the details. So uh, obviously, you know, it's not great if uh, Anthony Nodo is willing to sell some of his shares or whatever, but you do have to keep 
keep in mind, um, you know, look at year to date. This stock has been, we're at a 52 week low of 482. It's been 525. You know, it's been below where we're at right now. And Noto has bought up a lot of shares uh, throughout this year. So he has maybe some shares that he's made some money on. Maybe he's looking to move those. Um, maybe, you know, the, the kind of bears are going to say, Hey, maybe he's not excited about the stock right now. Hey, he was buying up a ton, but now all of a sudden he's willing to sell. Maybe he thinks it's going to put the company in a better position or whatever, you know, who knows for sure. Um, Maybe it's a bad sign. Maybe it means nothing. Who knows? Um, but it is something to keep in mind that, yeah, Noto might be selling some shares here. Maybe it's a reason to panic. Maybe it's not. Um, but yes, it could sell uh, $1 billion in stock. And hey, there is speculation about a potential acquisition going on because of that. We also had uh, posted to the SoFi Stock subreddit. Uh, we have a financial leaders of tomorrow with Anthony Noto leading the list. And I thought this was funny because this guy, uh, you know, apparently Anthony Noto's on this financial leaders of tomorrow list. And the top comment said, hey, not to burst your bubble, but the list appears to be sorted alphabetically. So it just got Anthony A. Noto on top. Doesn't necessarily mean that they're the number one. Uh, he's the number one guy for them as far as financial leaders of tomorrow, but he's still on the list. That's so cool. That's so exciting. If you're a SoFi shareholder interested in the stock, on the fence about owning the stock, whatever, hey, there is some people who really believe in Anthony Noto, think he's a good leader, uh, think that they can, you know, hopefully help lead this company into the future of the fintech space. So either way, I thought it was cool. And I also thought that that comment was funny. So I wanted to share it with you guys. Um, this guy was asking, uh, why do you prefer to own a fintech stock like SoFi over one like Upstart, which has already uh, had earnings? Again, you know, you've already had earnings. So uh, maybe you already have some more information about the stock. Maybe less is up in the air. Who knows? Uh, and some comments coming in. Is Upstart even diversified? As far as I'm aware, the only business uh, is an AI that the determines risk for loans. I like diversity. SoFi is basically at book value. Upstart is at 2.5 price to book and a forward PE of 35. Uh, I have both uh, and both have lost me a shit ton of cash so far. Upstart's value comes down to an algorithm that has a limited data set to work with and that's it. In 10 years, SoFi will be measuring 100x uh, the amount of data on the people they issue loans to. So hey, just people kind of giving their thoughts and opinions of why SoFi over some other competitors or similar fintech stocks, um, you know, like an Upstart uh, or something like that, which is a uh, you know, conversation that a lot of people are going to be wondering about. Um, and then not only why are you in SoFi as opposed to Upstart, another question going around is why are you in SoFi over a big bank? Um, which is another interesting and good question. Um, this comment at least says that they like fintech banks like SoFi or Ally because they don't have extra brick and mortar costs associated with the big banks. They're also smaller companies with higher growth potential than the large cap big banks, which, you know, if you're risk on, if you're younger, if you have a brighter, you know, if you have more years for these things to compound and more years for the story to play out, uh, or you're trying to be a little bit risky with your money, trying to, you know, put a higher ceiling on your returns. And yeah, some of these companies can be more interesting and exciting while still being in, uh, you know, the, the, finance space. Uh, why tech and pla or tech platform and the amount of possibility so SoFi has to grow their offerings in insurance as well. For example, the tech platform has so many possible income streams with the Technesis acquisition. SoFi added subscriptions and service fees as well as to the income. Um, so yeah, there's some, you know, different points of views of why some people might be interested in SoFi uh, over, you know, a JP Morgan or uh, whatever. Um, we also have a uh, cash balance versus customer deposits. Uh, people talking about some of the differences there. Uh, and what's going on a lot of different information here um and uh yeah some stuff going on there uh but yeah sofi uh still you know things are going well over the past month 15.73 percent up uh 13.26 in the last week and again a very very strong day today but this is how a lot of the market works sofi has really been following the market when times are good they've been outperforming when times have been bad they've been underperforming we'll have to see what happens uh you know within the rest of this week and really within the rest of 2022 uh and whether the whole market's turn around it's it's all up from here or whatever, but we'll have to wait and see. Pretty much over this video today, guys. Let me drop a like if you did enjoy it. I would appreciate that so, so much. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about SOFI. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. Subscribe, stay up to date on all my latest content. Hopefully, catch you guys in the next one. But until then.